Jacob here. Today we're going to talk a little bit about patching the Nadar. I've got an action in Photoshop that I want to show you, which uses the Flaming Pair Flexify plugin. So here's uh, the Flaming Pair website, and you see they've got this uh, plugin for Photoshop called Flexify 2, and you can purchase that or you can use the free demo for a while. The purchase price here is $74 US. So let's just have a quick little look at what we're going to use today for our demonstration. Here's the panel that I'm uh, going to be demonstrating with. It's uh, shot in Melbourne, Australia last September. It's the front of Flinders Street Station, which is the major train station in uh, Melbourne. And now this was shot on the Nodal Ninja Travel Pole, which is a carbon fiber uh, extendable monopod type thing, which you can then mount a panoramic head on the top. And uh, so we've got a Canon 8 to 15 mil fisheye lens on the top of this travel pole with a full frame Canon 5D Mark III. We've got it configured at 9 millimeter, which is going to deliver a file size of approximately 8,100 pixels wide maybe a 32 megapixel image or so. Um, and it can do that in three frames. Now keep in mind this scene's very busy. We've got people all over the place. We've got cars in action. So I actually shot, oh, probably 18 frames, uh, rotated the, um, the uh, pole uh, at least three full revolutions to try to get as many images as I could get so that I could deal with multiple copies of people, blending lines, everything. Working in a busy environment is a bit tricky, but that's the image we're going to work with. So let's uh, get down to business here. We're just going to close that. Let's uh, take a look at how that image comes together in PT GUI. So let's just open up our project file here. Okay, so here we've got uh, our main fisheye images. And let's bring up the panorama preview. And there you can see it. And uh, so we've got this set up. We've actually used four of the images from our very large set. And uh, I do have a Nadar image in this set. I'll just quickly turn that on for you. So here it is here. If we turn on image four, you can see how that, that comes in. Now that was an offset Nadar shot with the pole angled down a little bit, pointing at where I was standing before. I think I moved about two meters off to the side to shoot that. But for the uh, demonstration today, we're going to just turn that off and let's just uh, stitch this panorama. We're going to use the Smart Blend uh, plugin because that really helps with all the moving people. But we'll just keep the file size nice and small. We'll just do it at 4096Y just to make the lesson move a little bit uh, faster. So let's go ahead. Oh, we don't want to overwrite that. We want to make sure that this is the one without the Nadar frame. So let's just make it uh, that. There we go. So we'll just uh, quickly stitch this. Hopefully it won't take too long. There we go, Smart Blend's running now. There we go, that's done. So let's uh, open that image up in Photoshop and see what we've got. Perfect. So there you can see along the bottom of this image, we've got all this black area where we don't have any content. So now what we want to do is we want to patch the Nadar. So the very first thing we've got to do is we've got to extract a Nadar frame out of this. And this is where the Flaming Pair plugin comes in uh, very, very handy. So what I've done is I've created a, uh, a Photoshop action, which uh, members of Pano Bootcamp get uh, when they join. And let's just run that and it's going to call the Flaming Pair and let's see what we get. And here we go. So there's our Nadar frame over here, and here's our Zenith frame. And we can see that we've got a couple of things that we can fix up. In general, unless the panels are really out of whack, there's no need to work with anything other than the Zenith and the Nadar. And this is a really good example. So what we're going to do is we're going to repair these two areas and put it back together. So first order of business is let's just fix this power line in the Zenith. That's really easy to do. I'm just going to marquee a section here. Now I should have changed my feather beforehand, but let me just uh, change the feather here. So let's just modify that with the feather. 
maybe four pixels will be fine. And we're just going to use the transform skew on that. So here we are, just pull this down a little bit until it lines up. Oh, sorry, made a mistake, cancel. Escape that first. Uh, we need to copy that first. Uh, copy it, paste it, then do the skew transformation. There we go. There you see that. Yeah, we're faking reality a little wee bit. Now let's just get in there and do a little bit of clone just to get that last little bit fixed here. Probably clone from there. I'll zoom in a little wee bit too. That's at 100%. Keep in mind we're working at a lower res thing here just to make this lesson run a little bit quicker. Let's just choose the source point here. There we go. That's that little tick is fixed. Okay. Now let's go over and patch this Nadar up. Now you can see over here there's a few errors. I'll just get the hand tool. Um, right there, there. We're not going to do a fancy job. When you're shooting on a pole, you're not in perfect alignment. And so you're going to get some errors in your stitching in the near field area. Now, obviously, that may have caused that power line, but that could have been blowing in the wind. But in general, you're never going to see them in the clouds. But you might see them on some tiled floor work or whatever here. And we've got a bit of an issue. So let's just quick and dirty do this. I'm just going to use the uh, rectangular marquee tool here. I'm just going to grab from oh, here and go down. And I'm going to use the patch command here. And this is now one of these Photoshop content aware things. Structure 3, color 3. These are, these are good things to use. I have very good success with that. So let's just grab this patch. We're going to slide it up here. Oops, hang on a sec. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, what have I? Oh, I've done a mistake here. I used the layer. Hang on a sec. I better flatten this first. There we go. Yeah, I had the other layer from the previous thing. Okay, let's just move the patch up. We just align it so that all this uh, no skid strip is pretty close. That should do it. Now, obviously, there's a bit of an angle here. It's not perfect. Let's see what we get. Yeah, it's not great. We obviously could fix that up a little wee bit better. We could possibly, let's just delete that. We'll go here with this. I'll use the uh, regular marquee tool. Fit that. I'm going to just use the content aware move command on this now. So I'm going to just do a quick little undo on that. Better zoom in one more time. We're having a little, just getting the details on this is a little tricky. We only want one pixel. There we go. That's not a bit better. We've got a little bit of a screw up down here. Let's just remove that. We can possibly, hmm, well, we might just do a little skew on that as well. Let's do another select here. We'll go up as high as there to there to there. I'm probably wasting more time than I should be on this. Uh, copy, paste, skew. Do that. Flatten it. And we'll just do a little bit more cloning here. Probably just clone from here. Yeah, we'll just fix that up a little wee bit more. Now, needless to say, the sky's the limit when it comes to fixing all this stuff. But that's good enough for the, uh, for the demonstration. Obviously, there's a few areas here in the uh, brickwork that we could have done. I might just, just for the heck of it, I'll just show you how we can put a little bit more in there.
you know, that's not perfect, but it'll whatever. That'll do the job. Okay, so now that we've got that fixed up, we've got these two areas, all we've got to do is hit play on our action again. And Flexify is going to do its trick, and it's going to convert this back to a rectangular file and lay it in as a new layer, and there we go. Now, why are we using another layer? When we use these transformations between the cube faces and the rectangular file, we tend to lose a bit of sharpness, but we've only worked down here in the Nadar area and in the Zenith area, so there's really no need for us to lose our sharpness in the main meat of the panorama. So what we're going to do is we're just going to feather that back in with a gradient filter. Now because we worked in the, both the top and the bottom, I'll just quickly duplicate this layer. There we go. We'll turn that one off. So this one we're going to work on here. So just to uh, show you what we've got, I'll just disable this layer. So here's our transformed thing. Now because we didn't have the center of the panorama here, we've got no content. It's just all pink. I don't really know why it's pink. But anyway, so we've got what we need to patch the nadar down here. And so that's going to be really easy. So we zip in here. And we're going to just grab a gradient filter. And we're just going to go, we probably just, you know, we did a bit of a transformation. We'll probably just drag it there in the center and bring it down. And we'll just flip that off and on, make sure it looks good. That pretty well does the trick. And now remember, we had that power line up at the top here. So let's just make sure we get our gradient filter in there to fix that. Let's find that area of the panel where there was that little error. That must be on the other side over here. And there it is right there. So now we're going to do that on this layer. And we'll activate that. And we're going to go in here and add a gradient filter. And we're just going to put it just before that little tick. And there we go, and that's fixed. We hold down the shift key when we add these gradient filters because we want to make sure we're completely horizontal because we don't want to have any problems with the wraparound blend line. So there we go, we've got that fixed. Zoom out, look at the full thing, everything's happy. Quickly flatten the layers and save our work. Save as. And we'll just call it uh, final. And there we go. Done. Now obviously you'd want to do these things on your full resolution files and when you're not doing a screen recording your machine's a little bit higher performance. But anyway that kind of shows you the techniques. The advantages of this are we don't have to build any external files. We're not converting our cube faces in another application. We're not leaving a bunch of breadcrumbs all over the hard drive. We've done this all within Photoshop and we've managed to keep the integrity of our file in the important areas. We've only done our patching in the Nadar area and uh, it's been very, very easy. Obviously we could have put more effort into the um, the accuracy of our patch. You can see down here then some of the, you know, where the stitch areas show up. But I was just showing the technique here. You can spend as much time as you want. Now this is an option if you don't choose to shoot a Nadar frame. Obviously if you're going to shoot a Nadar frame, there's really no need to fix it up unless you have a couple niggling stitch errors. But instead of spending all the time laying in the Nadar frame in the stitching program, which can take you another five minutes or so, we're just cloning it in. As long as you're shooting on a fairly simple surface like this, you should be fine. So now we've got a, uh, a TIFF file in equirectangular format, and we're ready just to put that into a panoramic tour. I'll, in the comments section, I'll provide this panorama uh, with and without the Nadar patch and with and without the Nadar frame. There'll be a couple little options in a tour format for you to view. Thanks a lot, and remember to join us at Pano Bootcamp. Take care.